you work for the whole month you wait 10 more days to get paid so it's like you work like 40 days or 41 days. every school every organization has its own as a foreigner, the most hated worker because everything in China in terms of workplaces is compromised. The working conditions are yeah, harder. By kids will be so scared of you. Maybe the first time you step. Welcome to my channel. My name is Rhoda. If it's your first time on this channel, honey, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. I promise you, you never regret being here. And by the way, thank you for clicking in the first place. So yes, if you are returning, Sabi, honey, you know, you know, you know, honey, you know what this video is about uh, based on the title of this video. Yeah, I'm not gonna go around y'all, but this video for is people for people who are planning to come and work in China or people who are currently working in China but always wonder why some things are happening with their job or doing sort of things they don't understand, you know. So I'm gonna be addressing quite a number of things on this video. So stay until the end again if you haven't subscribed i think this is the right time to subscribe and hit that like button because i'm going to be sharing everything that you need to know regarding working in china coming and working in china expectations and surprises that may shock you so let's start with foreigners um, treatment in workplaces when it comes to china do you want to know the most hated person in the school or an organization that has a foreign person <laughs> yeah this is yeah. not a lie yeah i've done my research regarding this and i've realized everybody has their own say about their place of work but sometimes you have to weigh um the good and the bad so you can compromise everything in china in terms of workplaces is compromising because you find that the, the work culture here is totally different from our home countries that's the first thing you can't really compare the world culture in china and the world culture in your home country they are totally two different places chinese have a work ethic that can let them work so hard irregardless of the contract and stuff like that chinese people don't look at that so they work really really hard but when it comes to foreigners coming to china you find everything we do we bind it according to our contract so which makes you as a foreigner the most hated worker because based on your salary it's regarded as high already so you are expected to work extra extra hard for that because they will compare the the way they work and the way you work so they may feel a bit angry about that this is a true fact even if nobody had said it to your face but the most hated person in your organization is probably you or it's gonna be you if you haven't worked in China as yet but you know that is a fact and we can't deny it right but irregardless of that every company every school every organization has its own problems and you can't really compare it with yours probably your problems are better than another person's problems in their organization so i haven't met anybody who actually have or give a hundred percent to their organization it could be the working conditions are harder or it could be when it comes to salary or the contents of the contracts they are not being followed it could be um the just the general rules about how the organization is run that um, that you may not find favorable so someone's problems may be someone's joys in their uh, place so you can't i can't really say every chinese organization or every chinese school uh, treats teachers like a b c d you know it's it's totally different when it comes to that every organization has its own downside every organization has its own problems that you don't wish on anybody but you may be surprised when you ask another person they'll tell you no in their school they don't have that sort of thing you know they can't complain they're happy with that but they also complain about they wish if their company can understand more in some companies asking for leave is um 
Asking for personal leave is something that you don't have to argue or fight for. In some places, asking for leave is like a crime, whereas workers are not even allowed there to take leaves. In some companies, in some areas, some schools, um, getting what you are entitled to is harder than in some places it's a smooth thing that is you know honored once it's in the contract it's done smoothly you don't have to ask for it in some so that's why i'm saying every school has its own own good things and its own bad things like i say you have to weigh the good and the bad to see whether you belong or whether you should stay because sometimes if you find that the hardships and you have other options the hardships are more than the good things you appreciate about the company i think you may as well try to find another place but irregardless of that if you find that you have more good things compared to the things you don't like about the company i think you can compromise so everything in china sometimes is more about compromising like i say the world culture here is different is different so hence you may find things you don't like and uh, things you like or appreciate about a company okay so um, yeah without further ado let's move on to the next thing the holidays how the holidays are calculated and how people work here you find that china has amazing holiday actually a lot of holidays if i may say some are short some are long but you find that most holidays you have to work for them they don't come as free it means you may probably before a long holiday you may probably have to work maybe during the weekends is uh, uh, covering up for the longer holidays you're gonna have suppose you're going to have five off days you may find before you may have a working weekend why this is a way of giving back the time you are gonna get as holiday so some will ask it's a holiday why should i have to work for it it's just the chinese way and it's not gonna be just your school or just the organization you are working for it's the whole of china so everyone will have to work have a working weekend or have to pay back those days it's like countrywide it's not the school that tells you to do so is fine that the chinese government will even show on their calendar that this weekend will be a working weekend because you have a longer holiday coming then we go to another thing when it comes to school payments in china the payment system is quite different with other countries i know like for example in my country uh the salary day or we say the payment day is every month and right the last day of the month falls on a weekend. That means you are paid the day before the weekend, right? So, but in China, it's not like that. So in China, most companies, usually most that I've worked for, like schools, they paid every on every 10th of the second month. That means if you work for the whole month, you wait 10 more days to get paid. So it's like you work like 40 days or 41 days, depending on which month ends, right? The date the month ends. So suppose the month end on the 31st, you are not paid until the 10th of the next month. For, for some foreigners, they'll find it really weird that they have to work for like 40 days only to be paid for the 30 days they work for. Yeah, remember, you do work for 40 days and you will be paid the 30 day salary, the previous month salary will come. It's just about it. Some companies are even, will even take longer. They work for like 45 days until they get their last month salary. So it just depends on the organization. Every company is different. Like every school different has system when it comes to payment. But you find um, in China, it's more like this. I haven't heard of a company that pays like on the dot uh, at the end of the month you know i haven't heard of a company like that they all pay like the next month on the 10th or on the 15th so yeah most foreigners will find it a bit weird so yeah you just have to come saved so that you won't run out of cash or you won't be working checking the dates you know I, at least you'll be disappointed because they won't give you a salary until the next 10th of the month or the 15th yeah so another thing that i would like you to know about working in china or coming to work in china is a foreign teacher coming from another country 
is also about the good. Now, this is the positive thing. Most schools will provide free lunch for the teachers, and um, which I think is a good thing. If you're somebody who is not picky, you can actually find that you love it and you to save much of your time by going to uh, maybe a restaurant you are going to spend. It means you also save once you decide to eat in school. So this is something I appreciate as well about the Chinese schools. Um, of course, if you are working in a kindergarten or a public school, yes, you have free lunch, right? But if you're working in training schools, I haven't heard of training schools that provide lunch for teachers. I haven't heard of any. The training school I worked for previously, uh, we'll start work like after lunch in the afternoon. So we didn't have that opportunity to be provided with right. lunch. Right. So let's look at the other, another thing. This is important the work schedule you find if you're lucky enough to find a school that has maybe the assistant that will provide you an assistant who understand english the better but you find most of the schools the person who will be responsible for your uh teaching materials your teaching schedule sometimes they don't even speak english which becomes really complicated to them they will just put a schedule out there and give you the materials and it will be up to you to plan on how you want to teach them and also convince the methods of teaching because most of them they will just want results and they don't even understand the material themselves so you may be surprised with things like this but don't worry you sooner or later come around on this and do what works for you and um yeah, just do your best and uh, do what works for you. But sooner or later, you get used to the system that you may have or not have an assistant. It's not every school that will provide you with an assistant when it comes to teaching. So it might be just you. Place and that's that. where you have to practice the usage of maybe gestures and other ways to make the kids understand. Remember, you'll be teaching children who have zero understanding of English. Unless if you're lucky that you go to a school that had previous English teachers so the kids may be well aware or knowledgeable about the contents or have um, you know experience with foreign teachers okay now another thing like if you are going to teach young learners be prepared to have some kids shocked when they see a foreigner because some of them they've never seen a foreigner in their life so you may be the first foreigner to see also it comes with the color like um your race also come in play here i find it it's so easier for white teachers to be accepted uh, especially in kindergartens and stuff but if you are a, a person of color you find that sorry y'all my camera just just turned off because it became so hot yeah so we are continuing from where we left so i was saying you find that if you're a woman or a man of color working in the kindergarten, you may have shocks whereby kids will be so scared of you. Maybe the first time you step in the kindergarten, but it gets better. Trust me, it gets better with time. When they get used to you, they will come around eventually. So yeah, they may be scared of you, but don't let that be your setback or something that will push away and hurt your job. It's expected and you can overcome it so do not find it so weird it happens a lot you know um, even when you stay in the school for a longer time when a new semester starts you find some kids they will have new kids coming to school so it's something that can happen repeatedly over the years that you're gonna work for your school or if it's gonna be a kindergarten like that if it's a normal school or private school uh, the older the kids the better understanding they'll have so yeah i think that's that's pretty much all so i'll be putting up together the requirements or something you should look into when you are applying or when you're accepting a job offer and things that you can negotiate for and expect in your contract this is a video i'm working on so stay tuned subscribe and i'll see you in that video 
and i hope you find this video helpful let me know in the comment section whether you're planning on moving to china and if you want to see some of my daily posts and uh, some of the nuggets i share please follow me on my instagram i'm an instagrammer where i share something on my posts on stories on daily basis so subscribe recommend this video to anybody who you know who is planning or thinking of moving to china and they may be helped so thank you see you in the next video bye